last supper by Leonardo da Vinci is a ghost in the refectory of Santa Maria delle Grazie in Milan. It's a hint of what it must have originally looked like. It's hard for us today, given the number of copies that exist, given the influence that it's had, to really understand how radical it was in the period itself. It was radical in the way it was painted using highly experimental and unfortunately not very good techniques in terms of its long-term survival. It was radical in terms of the way that the apostles and Christ interact. It was radical in the facial features that were pictured, in the gestures, in the astonishing interactivity of all of those characters. And now we can only get a hint of just how beautiful it must have once been. This is an academic copy made for posterity as well as perhaps by one of Leonardo's pupils trying to come closer to the master. But looking at the composition of this and looking at where Leonardo cited the original, it's something to do with the level of ambition, the illusion, the notion that all art requires a leap of faith. But this one, perhaps unlike anything that's happened before, would have seemed to the people who saw it as miraculous. This really did suggest another room, another space in which recognizable human beings were eating. And the idea that that would be cited in a dining room where monks would look up to it has additional resonance. And it's something to do with the sum total of Leonardo's explorations both into the human face, into the human figure, theology, architecture, optics. It's his masterwork. It's clear that this is a heftily contracted work between Leonardo and Ludovico Sforza. But at the same time, it's clear that Leonardo either has license to or pushes at the boundaries of what have been produced in images of the Last Supper before. So it starts with conventional theology, the moment where Christ says, one of you will betray me. But even as you look at the work, you realize it, it conflates a series of mini narratives into one image. It has this kind of underlying rhythm that binds it together. It has this central figure, and actually everything emanates from him. So you see St. James throwing his arms out. You see St. Thomas pointing upwards as if to say, is this the will of God? And actually Judas is always interesting in the Last Supper. And then not just in the way that he carries the bag of silver that becomes the symbol of his betrayal, but the way that Peter leans across to whisper kind of manically in St. John's ear. He pushes Judas away, but towards us. So he's both of the scene and, and separated from it. Because of publishing and mechanical reproduction, photography, we have a much greater sense of histories of art and what's important because of reproduction. But we forget that actually, it was only the most public of monuments that had that broad appeal. A lot of art was produced for private spaces or for places of devotion, churches. And this work was produced for a private dining room of a monastery in Milan. And yet in its lifetime, stories spread, the work became an object of curiosity, people wanted to see it. In the way we look at the Renaissance, there's no doubt that this work is a major pivotal moment.